couple of years ago, I made a video about how dangerous big, giant, old oak and hickory trees can be if they're anywhere near your property, your buildings, and so forth. Um, this is the perfect example. I did a video showing how I cut this off with a electric chainsaw that actually had blown down due to Hurricane Irma, which broke off the top half of it and it hit my metal building behind the camera back several years ago. And, uh, but in any event, it's been sitting here. My wife and I have been guessing the age of this thing. And uh, she thinks, I'm not sure exactly what she told me, but she thinks it's much older than I do. I had guessed it about 80 years, but my intent is to count the tree rings on this thing and see if we can estimate the uh, age of it. And uh, so now this part here, uh, I'll show you what it looks like as I just cut it with my electric chainsaw. This part up here, um, I had uh, smoothed it over with a belt sander using 36 grit and 80 grit and 120 grit trying to get to where we can see those rings. And I ran into a surprise in here, which I'm gonna show you, something I did not expect. So it's gonna be a challenge because of the way this thing is, is, is made. It's, it's about three feet in one direction, about three and a half the other. It's a very large stump. So we're going to give a try to tree ring counting, see if we can get a good estimate of the age of this, this giant uh, oak tree, and uh, we'll see what we get. Let's talk for a minute about uh, dendrochronology. This information from Wikipedia, the link is down below. Uh, dendrochronology or tree ring dating. This is the scientific method of dating tree rings, also called growth rings, to the exact year that they were formed in a tree. As well as dating them, this can give data for dendroclimatology, the study of climate and atmospheric conditions during different periods in history from the wood of old trees. Horizontal cross sections cut through the trunk of a tree can reveal growth rings, also referred to as tree rings or annual rings. Growth rings result from new growth in the vascular cambium near the bark that botanists classify as a lateral meristem. This growth in diameter is known as secondary growth. Visible rings result from the change in growth speed through the seasons of the year. Thus critical for the tidal method, one ring generally marks the passage of one year in the life of the tree. Now what I have found is I've looked at a lot of tree rings in my life, uh, a lot of pine trees and other types of trees, uh, especially a pine tree, saw through it, pretty easy to cut the growth rings. This oak tree we're looking at now, that's uh, a lot more complicated. But this is the, uh, the link uh, to Wikipedia, I'll put it in the... Uh, description as well okay this is just as cut after my electric chainsaw very difficult to make out the tree rings on this thing and uh, you can see up here much much easier to see them after sanding with that belt sander now i've also found that spraying a little bit of water on them helps so that's what i'm going to be doing is spraying some water on them Try to count the tree rings. And since this, and if you'll notice, see this black area? That's a surprise I had indicated we might have in this thing. It appears to be carbonized in the center of this, not rotted, because this goes through the wood. It's down through it. And uh, so, Makes it going to make it a challenge. What I'm planning to do, that looks like the center right here, is basically count the brown rings. There's a brown light, brown light, brown light. And they indicate what's a, uh, the brown is more of a uh, slower growing season, part of the growing season. And we'll count those starting with the first one out from the center and come out this way until we get just to the bark, but not include the bark. I'm also going to count out this way and also up that way. And I'm not sure how I'm gonna deal with this apparently carbonized area, but uh, what I'm gonna do is this to get a kind of an average of those counts and then we'll see how they compare. This is gonna be interesting. Um, 
why don't you go ahead and try to guess the age of this thing. I'm not going to count down here because I don't think I need to. The center's there. So we got good half of the tree here. We should be able to do it all on that half. So we'll see what we get. I'm, I'm going to use this large magnifying glass because some of these, these tree rings are very, very small, hard to see. Every tenth one, I'm going to put a push pin in like this to help keep track of where I've been. So what I'm going to do is zoom in a little bit. We'll start right over here and uh, try to zoom in a little bit. I believe since the light colored rings are a lot more distinct, I'm going to count those instead. And this is the first light colored ring here. So that'd be one, and there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, that's ten. One one, one and two, one and three, one and four, one and five, one and six, one oh seven. Okay, I got ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety. That was one hundred, then one oh seven right to the edge. That's what I got this way, counting the light colored rings. They're just a little more distinct and easier to spot than the dark ones. I'm going to do this similar thing to what I did over here on this other side. Counting the first distinct light colored ring is number one. This may not be the, the most accepted way to do it, but uh, this thing is very hard to uh, look at. One and two, one and two, one and three, one and four, one and five, one and six, one and seven. I got exactly the same number of them. Wouldn't have guessed it. Okay, now we're going to go over there. Looks like this split right on a white line. So I'm going to say 37, call that 37 and 38, 39, 40. 37, 38, 39, 40. That could be a mistake. Right about there. These are very, very hard to read here. And then uh, 111, 112, 113, 114. So 114 out there at the edge. I'm not as confident on these numbers as it was the others. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I counted one of nine out to in this direction, all the way to the edge, and uh. 
So we'll take a look at the overall picture here and see what we've got. Okay, I have two measurements on the right side over there at 107 and one straight up at 109. That one on the far left, 114, but there was a couple of cracks to deal with there. So I'm going to consider that less accurate and discard that and just average together 107, 107, and 109. Okay, averaging 107, 107, and 109. We get 107.6, I'm going to round that off to 108 years, being the estimated age of this tree. Now, what I'm going to do is say, take a look at the fact that it quit growing in 2017 when Hurricane Irma uh, blew it, uh, broke off the top half. And so subtract, uh, subtracting 108 from 2017 gives us Okay, if we go back in time from 2017, 108 years, that would put us back to about 1909. And uh, so, interesting, very old tree. Uh, it's a shame to see it blown down. It was the largest tree on the property when we bought it. We really loved it. Great Horned Owl was living in a hollow spot halfway up, but that's what led to it being broken off by Hurricane Irma. So anyway, I, uh, this is a very interesting project, a little tedious measuring those tree rings. And I'm going to take a look at that carbonized area to see if that's maybe due to a lightning strike, maybe in a future video. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please check out our other uh, links. And particularly the one on, I think the title was Big, Beautiful, but Dangerous Oak and Hickory Trees. And uh, I go through what we went through with this when it blew down on our building there. I was 20 seconds away from being crushed by it, so it uh, really hit home with me. And uh, also the uh, video I did and how I cut it down with my little 18-inch chainsaw. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like it, subscribe, check out these other links. We'd really appreciate it. Thank you very much.